today I'm putting in a low profile coffered ceiling into the upper area of the ceiling in our dining room. All of the trim on the lower level of the ceiling was here when we moved in and I've always loved it but I thought it just would need a little bit extra in the center here to make it really pop and be eye-catching right when you walk in our front door. This version of a coffered ceiling is actually pretty easy to install. It's basically just a 1x4 board framed in with some sort of molding. I am using cove molding on this one. I went with the cove because I think it matches the detail on the bottom of the crown molding that is already up in this room. Depending on the look of your house, you could go with something with a little bit more detail to the edge. So something like that would look really great too. So here's the cove on the left and on the right is another profile that you can find at any um, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you go, get your supplies. Whenever possible, I prefer to use the um, boards that are already primed when I buy them. So these are primed versions of this board. This is actually even a PVC version, so it's cheaper than wood and it's lightweight and easy to install. So um, I've chosen the PVC cove molding for this. If you don't buy the primed boards um, for whatever reason, you find it cheaper to use a different kind, I suggest priming before you hang them. It just makes life easier than it, it is to paint three or four layers of paint above your head. So a couple layers of prime before you install your boards is always great. And I want to point out here that I am not paneling my ceiling. I have a little bit of texture on my ceiling, but it's really thin compared to most texture. So I decided to leave it as is so that I didn't have to worry about the fixtures that were in the ceiling of this room. If you have a really thick texture in your ceiling, you may need to scrape it off or install some sort of paneling underneath the trim to level out the ceiling. So I just grabbed a few examples of things that you could use from my garage. This is just a thin plywood board. There's a um, thin, thin tongue and groove beadboard that you could go with or MDF. You could also go with something thicker, like the three quarter inch tongue and groove that always looks really great and classic in any room. I just wanna make sure that you know that whenever you're putting those panels underneath, you wanna install it underneath the one by four trim because if you only put it underneath your molding, then your molding is gonna stick out past your one by four, the thickness of whatever that is, that you, the panel that you've got underneath there. I highly recommend that you plan everything out before you start putting any boards up. I carefully measured the ceiling that I'm installing this trim on and laid out a diagram to make sure that I wasn't gonna hit any of the fixtures or vents in the ceiling. I also used a stud finder to make sure I knew which direction the framing up in that ceiling is running so that I can attach my boards, or the longest, heavier, heaviest boards on my ceiling into that framing to get a good grab before that heavy duty adhesive that I'm using sets. So I'll show you how I do this in a minute, but so you know, I am using heavy duty construction adhesive to install these and brad nails. So when you're installing your trim into the ceiling, you wanna use a really long brad nail. These are two inch brad nails that I'm using to install the trim to the ceiling, basically because this board is three quarter inches thick. Your drywall is gonna be either half an inch or three quarters inches. So what you're left with at that point is just a half an inch grab into the wood, the framing underneath. So you wanna have at least a two inch brad nail there. When I install my cove molding against this one by four, I, I go for a shorter brad nail. I think that's about a half an inch, just because I'm only installing the cove molding into the one by four trim. It's not going into the ceiling. And this PVC molding can be a little bit more delicate, so I reduce the pressure on my brad nail or two so that it doesn't fire the nail too far into that molding. Before I put any of the long boards up across the ceiling, I like to just use the stud finder to quickly mark across the ceiling with just a pencil where my studs are. That way I know I want my brad nails there to help the board stay up while the adhesive dries. So just one more quick look at the diagram that I drew up of my ceiling. I want to explain a couple quick things. So the joists, the uh, framing supports in my ceiling run this way. 
so I chose to have the longest boards go across there so that I could have the nails go into the joist for that heavier board to support that heavier board while the construction adhesive dries. When I installed when I installed these longer boards, my husband helped me. He was on one ladder on one side, I was on the other side. But you can do this job by yourself. If you have um, some two by fours laying around, you can build a dead man support to brace the boards on one side while you are on the other side. That dead man support makes it a little bit harder when you go away from the wall because you don't want it to shift while you're trying to attach the other side. So I have a little trick. I installed the side boards so they're cut exactly the same length and I know I'm getting it square. And then I installed this next longer board straight up against it. So I know I've got a, the same distance across these areas. And then I cut these boards and install those after that. You do wanna be careful though because you don't wanna install these boards, the last row, if you're moving from one side all the way across, you don't want to install these boards before installing this one because it could be hard to get this last board in. So you want to install this board in and then cut and measure these pieces to fit exactly. Okay, let me show you a little bit of my install. It's really important when you are installing your boards to keep using your tape measure and your squares to keep the boards square to each other. Your eye is going to pick up any big differences when you walk into a room where you've installed this coffered ceiling if the distance between the boards isn't equal. I use a pencil to carefully mark a straight line across the board before I apply the adhesive to the back of the board. Make sure that you use plenty of adhesive. You don't want it to squeeze out the sides, but you do want to make sure that it has a strong enough grab onto the ceiling. For these short boards, there probably won't be joists behind them, so I tend to fire the brad nails in at an angle that keeps it from backing out of the drywall or sliding down across a nail that is shot straight in. So I fire those nails at a slight angle to keep everything um, held tight against the ceiling or, or against that drywall while the construction adhesive sets. Another trick to keep um, all of that 1x4 flush with each other, so you want that shorter 1x4 to be completely level and even with the longer board. So another trick to keep it even is to use little boards to brace it, to hold it into place while the construction adhesive, adhesive sets. And I also could use, um, sometimes I use a screwdriver like I'm doing here, or you can use shims to do the same thing to sort of hold a piece further away just to hold everything level while the adhesive sets. When I install the cove molding, I like to measure each piece, each section, cut it and install it as I'm working. Then I use my nail set whenever I need to set a nail deeper into the molding and use my spackling to fill the holes as I work. That just makes it easier for me to not have to move the ladder back and forth doing a bunch of different jobs. I have a separate video I'll link to in the description below explaining where to use wood filler and where to use caulk and my tips for best practices with that. Once you've got your wood filler and caulk looking perfect, make sure you use a high quality brush or paint sprayer to get a perfect professional finished look on your molding. And here is my finished room. So this is the view from my front door. You can see that molding is eye catching and makes the whole house look grand. Uh, I think it fits perfectly with the style of the house that I have with all of the molding everywhere. I guess it's a traditional looking house. But thanks for checking out this video. I hope this helped you figure out what you want to do in your house. And make sure you check out the description for links to more of my home remodeling videos. Thanks, guys.